The nuclear age brought with it fears, but also a feeling of tremendous power and possibility. I think there was a kind of an optimistic peak, if you like, in terms of what we thought technology and science could do, probably in the middle part of the 20th century, in the 50s, say. And I suspect that was associated with all sorts of technological developments, but also with a sort of cultural optimism that came probably after the Second World War, the idea that technology was going to solve a lot of the problems that we had previously. In the 1950s, the future was going to be a planned utopia of wide boulevards and shining skyscrapers, where we'd all be happy and prosperous. And the engine of this new prosperity and certainty was to be the computer. Just as the telescope had let us see the heavens and the microscope the building blocks of life, so the computer promised to let us see into, and maybe even control, another dimension. The future. James Lovelock remembers those heady times. There was that wonderful sense of certainty in those days about everything. Look where we've got this, you know, the future is terrific. We can do all these things. And it was wonderful. Everything was so simple and so possible. The sky was the limit. Suddenly we could do computations the unaided mind never could. Solve problems we had never solved. Just build a bigger computer, and even the unpredictable would be predicted. No more dust bowls. Now we would predict and control the weather. No more economic crashes. With the calculating power of the computer, policy makers believed they could now predict and control the economy, affecting the lives of millions. They believed that they'd finally now got the theory, got the um, statistical tools with the power of the computer to once and for all understand how the economy really did operate. Policymakers believed that these were, if you like, laws of economics in the same way that there are laws of physics. I mean, after the traumas of the 30s and the war of the, you know, the, in the 40s, uh, the Western economies performed spectacularly well for a very long period of time. Uh, it was totally unprecedented prosperity, very low unemployment, and you know, everybody exuded confidence. Turning in the direction of a new world that symbolizes man's dreams, prophecies, hopes and aspirations. In the distance we see it... Government and corporate films confidently portrayed a future of equilibrium, stability, progress and prosperity. But at the same time that scientists were confidently predicting this flawless future, a meteorologist called Ed Lorenz discovered something in 1962 radically at odds with it. While the military were focused on trying to predict the weather day to day, using vast computers to do it, Lorenz, using an early desk computer, built a simplified model to look at the underlying mathematics to see if the weather had hidden patterns. Lorenz's discovery came when he ran his model first with one set of numbers, and then again, with what he thought were the same numbers, but which the computer had rounded off, making them minutely different. He put in what he thought were identical numbers, but the, the, the starting numbers were different by just a tiny, tiny amount. So there was no reason for him to think that it would actually end up being very different. What Lorenz found was that the tiny differences in his starting numbers, instead of having no effect, dramatically changed his results. Things look like they're all carrying on very nicely and then they suddenly all behave in a very odd way um, and the numbers um, don't do what you think they're going to do. You know, you imagine these two paths going along just, and they're, they're just nudging each other and it, it becomes a sudden point where suddenly one of them goes off. But actually that happened. The fact that that was going to happen was right back here. It wasn't where it happened. One of the most fundamental assumptions which every scientist from Newton onwards had made was that a small error in a large system just disappears. It has no consequence. Like a small imperfection in a single part on a long assembly line would make no significant difference to the final outcome. It is this critical assumption which Ed Lorenz's work turned on its head. Lorenz's accidental discovery had tremendous implications for the real world. He could suddenly see that when a system changed, it needn't be because at that moment something had caused it to change. 
It could be that the seeds of its destruction had been there, slowly growing, hidden in the mathematics, all along. The moment the system diverged was the end result of a tiny, unnoticeable change a long time ago. Lorenz had rediscovered what Poincaré had merely glimpsed. He called it the butterfly effect. So if you have a butterfly fly, flapping its wings, the effect will be very tiny at the beginning. Uh, you will see nothing. And then after a while, it will change some fluctuations in the air, some fluctuations in turbulence. And then if you wait long enough, like six months, it may have uh, uh, tremendous effects. The computer which had been heralded as the engine of stability and certainty had become the engine of instability and uncertainty. So computers allowed us to explore things that... Pre we used to throw these terms away, you know. Mathematicians would say, well, that's too hard, or let's assume it's not important. We can't do that bit, so let's assume it's not important. And you end up with a linear system, which reinforces your view that the world is this kind of quiet place, generally speaking, where, where nothing really surprising happens and we'll be fine and we just need to know how it works and we can work everything out. To, to something where you, the computer allows you to put back in these terms, and Lorentz was basically putting in terms that previously he would have thrown away, and it turns out they changed the system altogether. In ter certainly it's predictability. It's just a brilliant demonstration, accidental demonstration of chaos, really, in the system. It is the function of the United States Weather Bureau to gather information on such conditions. The question was, how much chaos was there in the system? And to give advance warning when human life and property are threatened by high water. How many aspects of nature did this new mathematics apply to? Was the unstable turbulence of natural phenomena simply because they were complicated, in which case one day we would sort them out? Or were they governed by the sensitivity to initial conditions of the butterfly effect? 